This is it, the final video with the microphone. It's done. It's finally finished. I think. Well, at least the casing's done. So if you ever wondered how a plywood box is designed, cut, glued, stained, varnished and assembled, keep watching. One of the final things to do with a microphone project is put the circuit into something presentable. And any good design starts with a paper and pencil. The design needs to be slick, but elegant, smart, but also dashing. It must be functional. No point in making something look good, but sacrifice performance. I will make it from wood, one of the oldest materials man has ever used. I'll want the microphone PCB on top of a shaft, so it will look nice. The casing will be round, and it needs to be thick enough to house the components. On the front side, I'll need the sound permeable mesh to protect the microphone component. Now it's important to not overcomplicate designs. Use as few parts as possible. This makes the build easier, and also there are fewer things that can go wrong. When the box design is done, we will know also how big the PCBs are and where all the connectors and holes need to be. I think this will turn out just fine. So after the design has been finished, all parts need to be transferred into a CAD software, scaled accordingly, and printed out. I then proceed to glue the printed parts onto a piece of plywood. For this, I'm using stick glue, because it's a kind of adhesive that's not really good at gluing, and has a low water content. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not referring to any brand in particular, but stick glue in general is horrible, and in this case, that's exactly what I need. After drying, all the pieces need to be cut. For this, I'm using a fret saw, but of course I could have done this the old fashioned way, by hand, but that would have taken me at least twice as much time and it would turn out more messy. I'm not cutting each piece one by one. First I need to cut the big board into more manageable parts, and only afterwards do I cut out my final pieces. Once the parts have been cut, I proceed to add the holes. For this I'm using a pillar drilling machine. This ensures that all drill holes are perpendicular. Now when doing this by hand, it's quite difficult to pull off, so that's why I resorted to this machine. The holes have multiple purposes. The first of them is enabling me to perform cuts inside of my pieces. For this, I insert the saw blade into the piece, make the cut, and then extract the blade. It's a bit more work this way, but there are no extra cut marks in the wood. Now that all the parts are cut up, I proceed to remove the paper quite easily, that's why I used the horrible glue in the first place, and I need to sand off all the edges. Any sort of splinters or wood chips could interfere with the next steps. Any bits of paper that got glued to the wood and did not peel off are also removed during this step. Now once all the pieces are cleaned off, it's time to start gluing things together. In this project there are three main parts, the microphone head, the shaft and the base. As glue I'm using white vinyl based wood glue. I find it does the best job. but since it has a large water content, it's important to clamp the pieces together until they dry. Otherwise, they would bend. At this point, we see the second use for the holes. I'm using them to align the pieces. I'm using some thin nails inserted into the holes, and this way I'm ensuring that while in the clamps, the parts do not move. And they dry up in just the right way. After a bit of drying, some more sanding is needed, and staining. I wanted to show this, but my camera did not agree to my plans. So, in the next step that I can show, I'm adding these veneer pieces with markings and logos to the previously assembled parts. For this, a type of glue is needed that does not contain water. I'm using this glue that was originally designed for shoes and hide. In Romanian it's called prenadez. It's a kind of glue that you put on both sides, leave it to dry, and then the two parts are joined. Some pressure is applied, and it's done. The parts are glued together forever. After a bit of sanding, the white edges need to be stained. I'm using wood stain for this. I apply it with a cloth and it's important that no wood stain remains on the surface. This is not varnish, you need it going into the material not to stay on top. More parts are glued, I join the small handle to the microphone head and the shaft to the base. It's critical for these two to be aligned, to be perfectly aligned at a 90 degree angle. Now come a few layers of protective varnish. This will bring out the colors in the wood, and also give 
protection in time. For the connector openings, I'm using some small panels. These are not stained, for artistic reasons. To glue them into place, I'm using the same glue as before when working with veneer. Also, a wooden button is added. This will be used to enable and disable the microphone. And it's finally time to put everything together. In this step, I'm using only screws. This way, if there are any problems, the device can be opened and fixed. But that will not be necessary. Now I have two wires between the microphone head and the baseboard. A shielded wire for the audio signal and ground, and a plus wire to supply the amplifier circuit. The wires go through the shaft so it's nice and tidy. Add a few more screws to the bottom, and it's done! After three weeks of working on this thing, it's finally finished. Of course, I still have some ideas about how to improve the circuit, and a lot of testing is needed. But the design and the casing is done, and the first tests are done by doing the recordings for this video, which I say came out pretty well. So let me know what you think of this design and assembly process, and if you want to get news of any new videos, please subscribe to my channel. Hope you got some useful hints, and see you next time, bye bye!